Well, hey guys, thanks for joining me. It is time. It is two o'clock Eastern time, one o'clock Central. That's as far as I'm going West. So we do have someone else joining us, West. We're going to introduce everyone here. I want to say how this is going to work real quick. You see a chat dialog box at the bottom of your screen. Please use that. I am monitoring the chat. I do like hearing from you. If you have questions you want to raise to this panel, raise them there. We will try to answer those live. And if not live, well, at least I'll type to you as well. Now, I'm Craig O'Neill. I'll be hosting this webinar. I'm Vice President of Training here at Auto Text Me. It is a privilege to introduce this topic of the Service Advisor of Tomorrow today, right now. And with me is CEO of Auto Text Me, Chris Cloutier. Chris, go ahead and introduce yourself. Thank you, Craig. I appreciate that. I'm the CEO of Auto Text Me, and I appreciate that you have invited me now to two webinars in a row. Yes. It's exciting. <laughs> um, once again, I think we've got a lot of good things to talk about. Service Advisor of Tomorrow Today, some of the technologies that we use, some of the processes that we should be doing. When you're running a shop, we all know that it sounds easy on the outside, but on the inside, it's so much more difficult. So hopefully we'll, we'll have some good leveraging of technology and process in today's webinar. And I'm excited to be a part of that. I mean, one of my reasons for creating the software a long time ago was to take that ability to take technology and customer service at it together and create something that, uh, you know, was very beneficial to a customer. Enough about me, though. Let's talk about the new guy on the panel, the new guy in Auto Text Me, Jeremy. Uh, I'll do a quick I'm from the new guy. of Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy is the new guy. Uh, recently has signed on with us um, as of two weeks ago. Uh, Jeremy and I have been having conversations for quite some time. Uh, quick side note. Jeremy is now our VP of marketing for Auto Text Me. He has replaced one of the guys that we lost at the end of last year. And you know, it's taken us a long time to find the right person. And we definitely, uh, within the last couple of weeks, have seen some amazing things from Jeremy, including his background. Already, his background proceeds or it, it, it exceeds any of the backgrounds that I've ever had, right, Craig? And he's only been here one week and his background is already better. So with yeah. that, Jeremy, I'll pass the floor over to you and give you a second to our, our minute to talk about yourself. Yeah, okay. Well, th thanks for the introduction. And I'm excited because within two weeks, I've already learned like what, what we can learn from Auto Text Me customers is going gonna, is gonna to blow me away. So working in that in that space, knowing what you guys know, I love, Craig, how you put the titles of today, you know, tomorrow and today. So like, I'm kind of in a mode of today right now. So I'm going to try to get on a brain thinking about tomorrow, but that's, mm. I think that's, that always feels like there's the tension there that we want tomorrow to be better, but we can barely get past today. So yeah. that's how I feel to be honest, Chris, right. Getting, you know, getting right in board with you guys. Yeah. We've been talking for months, but just to kind of get my brain around all of the amazing features and then what, how this is changing things in the shop is um, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to be a part of that and to get to know the team more has been Exciting. So I, I also look forward to talking to some of the customers a bit more. I know I had a chance with the advisory panel a few months ago. So looking forward to that continuing. Absolutely. And folks, Jeremy's awesome. I just got to say, I love having him part of this team. I think he's going to clarify our messages even further. So keep tuned. We are going to have a lot of fun. Now, let's dive into some of the topics that we're going to be discussing today. First off, what to expect. We're going to review each of these things. The role of the service advisor in the shop is paramount to this conversation. Uh, we also want to talk about the tools that a modern service advisor can leverage and the processes, of course. If you've listened to us before, we talk process. A tool by itself outside of the process, not as useful. We put those things together. And then we need to also draw attention to how this all impacts the bottom line of the shop. What makes it worth engaging in all this? What makes it worth even listening to these awesome dudes talking about all these things that service advisors can do to benefit the shop? Now, we asked a poll at the beginning of our registration forms, and I thank you all for filling this out. This is deeply, deeply insightful. The things that service advisors excel at the most, according to the feeling of those who are responding, is pretty clear that building relationships is something that service advisors excel at, estimating and sales as well. And some of the other items that were down on that are the parts management, internal comms and workflow. And then we asked the inverse of this question, which job do you feel service advisors struggle with the most? And I thought this was pretty interesting and answers at first seem a little bit all over the place. Workflow management, key to one of the struggles. 
a key thing that we hope to solve. In fact, internal communication ranked very highly. I know that that is a continual piece for shops. And then Tide is estimating and building client relationships. We had some late registrations here just before we opened. So I was kind of curious to see if that tiebreaker occurred. We'll see about that later on. Uh, just to break it down into the top threes for each so we can see that side by side. Top three strengths, building client relationships, sales and estimating. Top three challenges, workflow management, internal communication, and building client relationships. All right, so we're both strong and we're not, and it doesn't even surprise me a little bit when you look at how the job descriptions for service advisors actually are throughout the industry. Uh, service advisors, I think probably to a greater extent, and Chris and Jeremy, tell me if you agree, not as clear as what a job description for a technician is, yes? Absolutely, Craig. And uh, I'll I'll show my uh, colors here, my 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 feathers. Uh, when you asked me for a job description, uh, <laughs> I did not have a clear job description to give you, uh, oh, no. which is totally on me, right? I I I own two auto repair shops. You would think I have all kinds of them, but <laughs> not very effective and, and efficient ones. And it's funny in the different groups that I'm a part of. Very often in the Slack or email chains, or you name the different tools that we use, every once in a while, you'll get that post that says, hey, who's got a good description of a job description for X? And a lot of times it has to do with the service advisor or the CSR. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I think we have text down to a T. Maybe, maybe not. I see them for text like every once in a while. There. That's good. <laughs> Yeah. No, it's and, interesting. Go ahead, Jerry. Yeah, Craig, on the um, I'm looking at this here going the building client relationships on both sides. Was there kind of some minutia there that maybe some insight there we could add to that, Craig, where what what could be the challenge perspective of that and what could be the strength side? I I'm did we Oh yeah. To, no, see this is absolutely going to land on your desk, Jeremy, and you're going to help us science this out yeah. further. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz that I'm first looking at going, okay, great, awesome. It's a strength and it's a challenge. Perfect. What what are we going to do here? So yeah, no, I think that's key. And and this is the thing. As I, I prior to doing this, I've identified three main categories that really everybody does seem to agree with. Service advisors are responsible in these main categories, and that's client satisfaction, internal management, and generating business income. That's the sales estimating side of everything. And that's about where it ends. <laughs> from here, you see everything from opening up hoods to sweeping floors and keeping workspaces clean as well. Uh, I even went on to Indeed and just started searching for uh, the job descriptions of the people in my area. I, I do encourage our, our audience to do this as well. Look in your zip code, look out of your zip code. Look at the job listings out there that other businesses have for service advisors. And you're, one thing you're going to notice right out of the gate is the job ads. Almost 80% of them dealerships. Uh, I found a lot more from dealerships. They were also very descriptive, very descriptive on benefits package, but it doesn't really describe the job except for key responsibilities. And this is a snippet of one. I left the name of the institution out of here, but there was a couple of things that really stood out to me that just it, 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 the way I interpret a service advisor was challenged. Like they're inspecting the vehicles in this establishment. I think, all right. I've done that because I've been a technician before when I was working as a service advisor. However, that was a technician job. <laughs> yeah. There's a clean line. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that a service advisor job as a job title, that's a major thing. Actually in the state of Michigan, I'm a little surprised that that is even on here. The state of Michigan requires certain certifications for certain areas of a vehicle. If you are making a recommendation of a service, you have to be qualified to make that recommendation according to state standards and do that. This was a Michigan shop. <laughs> so is somebody unqualified and non-tested and uncertified making a recommendation as a service advisor? Ooh, don't know. Craig, you know, I, I want to add on, and Jeremy had asked this question. I think it's a great question, right? Building relationships was at the top of it was also, you know, in, in the, the, the bottom three. Um, you had workflow and you had internal communication. I mean, it, a common theme, and I think as most everybody on this panel, as well as everybody in the audience understands is, and I could see why there's a dichotomy there, and it has to do with time. Mm -hmm. All these relate around time, right? It takes time to build a relationship. And if you don't have the time because your shop's busy, because your workflow is chaotic, 
you're, you're not having that time to connect with the people, right, that you should be or doing the things that you should be doing within. And we all know this, that shops, and, and I'm as guilty as anybody else, managing the workflow, managing the intake. We can't, you know, we compare it to dentist's office a lot. Well, dentist's office don't have the emergencies like auto repair. A, a vast majority of the cars still coming into our shops are based off of an emergency they're not based off of the cleanup, the teeth cleaning, the regular. There is, but you still mm-hmm. think that our 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 clogs come in because of the rush of people whose car is broken. You can see the beads of sweat on my head right now. I'm in Texas uh, right now. It's 100, and I think it's going to break 110 again today. Um, mm-hmm. When it's 110 degrees outside and the heat index is 157,000, cars break, and it's a good, good thing. And we got to fix them. So, you know, time, 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 time. And, you know, we're going to talk about this and, and I'm a big believer in once again, technology extending or extenuating your ability to do things better and quickly and more efficient. So you can have the time to continue to have those relationships, right? And that's managing workflow with technology and all these other things. So I just want to kind of lay down the framework there. I didn't say that at the beginning, you asked me a different question, but as Jeremy said, where's kind of the correlation here? I think time, because of one of the keys to answering these questions. And how do you get time back? That's the benefit of using technology. Yeah. It's, how do you get time back from ordering uh, uh, a package on Amazon while you're sitting in your underwear at three in the morning or going to Walmart at three in the morning in your underwear, or you're not, but everybody else is in their underwear. That takes you time <laughs> to go to Walmart, right? If you're, you're sitting by your desk, right? You can have it overnight at, or within the next couple hours, it's showing up the next morning. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And you mentioned in the process too, and that's how I've learned to break this down is these responsibilities, the description of our job. If you'd start putting it all out there, man, I don't know who would want to be a service advisor because <laughs> it just sounds like chaos when you just list all the things that you're responsible for. And if you can imagine anyone who's worked the job for a week understands the volume of phone calls that come in, people walking in the door, technicians needing question parts that need to be ordered. All of those things seem to always be all at once. And that drives some of the most, I don't know, I would say it would be the, the reason for most disengagement that I see from any part of this process, they get overwhelmed. And the tools that we have to give them when they're first introduced, we've seen it before in some of our other presentations where we talk about when you're introducing things, you see this implementation dip that they can't even embrace. They can't even imagine doing the change. They're too busy reacting to all the things along the process. Now, one thing we did, and, and me and Jeremy have talked about this too. We've laid out some items on this process, beginning to end, beginning point setting expectations from the beginning, key thing. One thing that almost never came up in any of the job descriptions that I had, except for a couple, was that final point all the way at the end of committing the client to the next visit. Mm. Rarely yeah. even mentioned. Now, if you did see it mentioned, what what kind of was the one particular thing that you saw, like book the next appointment? or was Yeah, it, it was actually, it, it was. Um, I, would, I should have saved the example, Jeremy. It was a, actually a pretty decent description of, of utilizing their CRM uh, mm-hmm. in order to bring customers back for their follow-up visits. There was yeah. very few of those listings had anything remotely like it. Wow. And now, and now that Chris, you brought that in about time, if that last point feels like if you're dealing with emergencies all day, right? You, wow. That's, that even feels like something that's going to be skipped every time, right? Like we've got, we're just fixing cars and this is, has nothing to do with maintenance, nothing to do with the last recommended service nothing to do with what the CRM might've been bringing in. This is just where pays are full with emergencies. So are, are you, would you think Craig, like it, are we getting a higher repair order average from, so from the great preventative maintenance work, or is that an okay place to be? Are we an okay place to be an emergency shop versus a maintenance repair order? Like what, what's the. Well, that's, it's a perfect question. And, and I think that's something that each shop has to define for their type of model. I think you always will have a little bit of each transmission shop. Yeah. Uh, like we had, yeah, it was people's worst day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You're, <laughs> yeah. Which no, is Jeremy's like funeral, point, like a funeral director. Yeah. I, yeah. I think it's a great point he makes, right? And and we know this as humans, right? We, in order to get things done, we cut out things, and it's just natural for us to cut corners, cut things out that we don't deem as important. So I agree at the end, right? If you're getting slammed and you're seeing double the amount of cars come in, 
how motivated are your people at the counter to have that follow-up? Because they're thinking, crap, do I, you know, in the yeah, back of their yeah, mind, yeah. crap, do I want yeah. all these 50 cars coming back in? Yeah. 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 I just want to break. I want to breathe. I want to yep. go drink a cold pop in the back of the shop. Uh, you know, um, so yes. And, and right now we're kind of, you know, I'm in the moment of now summer, once again, in Texas. So you catch me in two months when everything is now dead and we're scrambling to get people back in. And yep. you know, I always, always say this market for your in busy times for your slow times. And I think we make that mistake often. Yeah. I think and so that, too. That, that's where I love that, Chris, what you said in two months, I'm thinking, where would your staff even know where to go to drum up business? I've loved looking into your marketing module. Some of just immediately seeing that rainy day folder, like, wait, we, you don't have to go looking for this stuff. We, if you did the other parts, right. Of those previous steps, the right, the rainy day folder covers the Absolutely. day. I, that's, that's how I was getting that sense. Like, wait, so you're going to go from emergency where maybe they want a cold pop to now we've got maybe two extra hours. What are they going to do with that time? And can we, even in a remote sense without the owner being right there, is there something that they can know is their next task to go see how about drumming that up? I don't, I don't know. How, what have you found about the rainy day folder success, Craig? Is that Well, what? that's the interesting thing, Jeremy, is see exactly that. So at this point in the process, the rainy day folder, folks, is that feature inside of Auto Text Me where, where the unapproved DVI items go yep. into a folder for, for follow-up, right? The thing is, is if you don't tell us that an item has been approved, that's an unapproved, unaddressed item that goes in the rainy day folder. We allow you to be able to edit it later with certain integrations. You can even see the shop management system history directly on your screen with that. But still, what service advisors don't do, even on slow days, and is not just when they're busy, even when they get slow, it's just not part of their job to go in and start doing that unless they get that clear direction from the owner, unless they get the training on how to do that. So the success of it fails, I think, in, in really two areas. One is the owner does not make it a priority in most cases where it fails. And they also aren't holding the service advisors accountable to making, tracking, and keeping good records of work that's approved. They actually, in most cases, rely on the shop management system to simply track declined services for them. And then they have an integration with another system that will go in pull out the declined services. And Chris and I were talking on this. We had, we were asking several of our clients, when when you're doing these follow-ups on declined services, how are, how are you leveraging that? And what most of them said, we're not using that, yes. even when it's automated. Why? Correct. Yeah, correct. Why? And I think you a good point in on this, right? In, in, and whether that gets skipped intentionally or not, there's a lot of trust put in technicians, which there should be, but reviewing those inspections from a service provider's perspective, and, and we have young service advisors in our shops, and we and we have the more you know more experienced seasons ones, and and the seasons ones they do understand the importance of reviewing that inspection and really understanding what that technician's saying and knowing the why behind that that inspection. I think that's another step sometimes, Craig, that gets glossed over, unfortunately, in the whole process and this whole workflow that the review is not done to the extent that it should be done. Because that takes knowledge, I think, a lot of the time from the service rider perspective. Service rider is kind of a hybrid type person, right? They're that, that mm -hmm. customer service representative, but a, a really good one has that knowledge on the back end to understand what that technician is truly saying, right? And, and there's some translation layer there because what the customers and what they're explaining to the customer is, is is well, let's call it normal speak and what they're talking to the tech is tech speak and we all know that that sometimes can be it to us to the average lay person maybe not to us you know it sounds like the muffler bearings yeah. and the and the berlinker fluid and all the jokes that oh, we I make to point out one thing that you just said though that i thought was was spot on is the the why of it and the why i think is one of the things that we fail to clarify right out up front. And we, we created this document. Actually, I'm, I'm sharing this document uh, in chat as well, if you want access to this. This is the service writer, according to Auto Text Me. And one of the first things in the mission, this is uh, definitely an echo of my coach, Bob Greenwood. The why of it is very clearly that our, our professional responsibility is to ensure the safety, reliability, and efficiency of our clients' vehicles. 
Uh, this is a great template to begin with for any service advisor, really. Right. I would love if people take this, copy this, rip it off, duplicate it. That's R&D. And then give uh, us and, back your yeah. good suggestions. That's all we ask for. Yes, like, please. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Send it back. You, you say, hey, you're missing this. Please send when, it back. When so you we... do have an advisor taking the technician's input with that mission in mind, that changes the whole dynamic of everything that goes on with the process. Because now if we're truly concerned about the safety, reliability, and efficiency of the vehicle, to not follow up with that that client on anything that wasn't addressed is sin. <laughs> it is not good because we would be failing our mission. And if that is what we're selling, instead of just being an emergency refuge for people with broken down cars, but truly a partner in helping them preserve the integrity of their transportation, that's a whole different mindset. Now everything can become interconnected with that mission. Uh, all the yeah, steps are here. Go ahead. And, and Craig, I like that. Maybe back to the other screen where you had the strengths yeah. and the challenges. Maybe that is one of those connections of why it's sitting there as a strength. Uh, it was the building client relationships, right? You had it there, but then it was there as a challenge. Maybe we're seeing a little bit of built-in connection right there in this spot, right? If if I'm skipping the steps earlier along in your flow, right? Somewhere around in that spot where I'm checking the work that maybe the customer didn't approve from the DVI link, Right. They didn't approve it, but I'm sort of skipping that that step and not really going over. Wait, that really was an urgent, you know, semi urgent thing. And I'm going to translate that to the customer yep. back to that next commits client to next visit point. If I miss that that process in the middle where I'm really reviewing the inspection and the choices the customer's making, that feels like a big part of that final closeout with the customer. Right. If, it, if we're talking about the next visit not being an emergency, you'll want to take care of this. Correct. Yeah. Right. No, so and most shops that have this. any other emergency, it's because of a failure of some point in this process. And yeah, the thing I yeah. hate hearing is an excuse from one of the staff members on why that wasn't. Well, that's not my job. That's someone else's. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and you guys get the point, though, right? As far as building the relationship, if we're going to tell the customer, this is important enough. I know you had to decline it today. But it is important enough that that this is something you pay attention to within 45 days. And then if we're using the rainy day folder, we're triggering ourselves to follow up on that. Now we've made the connection, right? Because we've told yeah. the customer as they were leaving, this next visit is critical if you don't want to have an emergency. Nothing feels out of place with the client because the service advisor understands part of their job is making sure the clients are on board for that level of interaction, that recognize that we're that partner. So this sudden yeah. follow-up shouldn't feel like the salesy thing that's going yeah, to bother this, our yeah, client. Like, it's the service yeah. we provide. Yeah. 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 You were told about this, that we cared about trusting mm -hmm. you with a safe vehicle as you drove away. So yeah, I, I think I'm starting to see it guys. That rainy day is going to really kick my butt learning it. I can't wait to get in oh, yeah, the dude. details of that one. <laughs> so, and anyone else interested in learning on the rainy day folder, I'll get a link in chat here in a moment on yeah. that feature. So you can see our training yeah. page on that document but as well. My, my mind keeps going with that. Like, what does that mean? Should we let a customer leave our shop without becoming a member? Right. Should we let our customer... Yeah leave without knowing about perhaps our referral program. They gave us a big smile, a thumbs up as they walked out. Why didn't they know about our review prompt that we're going to give them in 24 hours? You all know? of these hey, things should up. be delighters. So right? It feels like it's all right there of the trust of we're not just texting you some automated junk, right? We are telling you why and how it's helping. I don't know. There's a lot there, guys. I'm, and it's I'm excited going about that. to make them happy, folks. And that's something <laughs> that we can actually track to. And there's some great stuff on the topic of, of client satisfaction here. So I want to kick it to Chris, who's introduced me to this model. I've had the privilege of being with Chris for live presentations of various trade shows where this gets presented. And this is enormously helpful for clarifying these things. So Chris, I'd love if you could go in and give us the Kano model. I can't. Could you go back to the prior scheme, screen, Craig? Because I, I want to discuss yeah. one thing that sure. I think is, is, I love it. <laughs> that's absent from here that that is worthy of discussion. We, we have a good audience right now. And, and it's this question of, should we leverage technology in the sales process to sell the job? So in here, you have sales call prompted via text. And this is, this is starting to morph and it's morphing more and more over time and having that ability to send out the estimate, the completed estimate with the approval, the ability to prove the jobs from the estimate. So I, I just, it, it's, it's an interesting concept um, in here. Once again, you have the, the prompting um, just question to you, Craig, was it on purpose that you left it out? For the prompting on the, 
Via, via, via other than the sales, you have the sales call prompted via the text, but what about the ability or sending out the estimate to the customer? Oh, for so no, that's, yeah, I get you now. Yeah, no, that's a great question. So I, in, in one of our other presentations, Art of Advising, uh, it's also on our, our YouTube channel. Um, I highly recommend that conversation I was having with Michael Cotillo. We, we took the uh, concept of an electronic sales form, and I do challenge that. I don't actually like texting digital estimates out because the way that most shop management systems construct those make way too many choices for clients to make in an electronic form. So I am a huge proponent of that sales call where we prompt that, that call to come in. I, once my estimates are ready, I text the customer, make sure that they know I'm ready to talk about the sales and they call me. They call me very quickly because the average text message is received within three minutes. I can't even leave a voicemail that quick. And then I do my main titular description of my job, I advise and I consult the client on what items on the estimate should be addressed uh, until that ability is there. And yeah, I am working on this. I actually just had a call with a client with a wonderful feature request and some ideas on this for how we can present that more easily in auto text me, give people some simple options that don't make them decide 20 different things on, on, a, on a complex estimate. So yeah, I left out texting an electronic estimate quite deliberately, and that is my sales process. <laughs> some may feel free to disagree. I know a lot of advisors are using it. I have some personal opinions that electronic uh, authorization forms are making service advisors even more lazy and expecting the clients to do the heavy lifting of determining what they want to do as opposed to you know consulting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's the interesting, it's it's the question of if we're creating these and building these relationships, does that commoditize the relationship? Yeah. I mean, uh, Amazon, any product on Amazon is the commoditization of the product, right? I go and I click and I, I might read a review, I might not. And then I put it in my basket and I check out, right? There is no interaction. There's no personality. There's no, there's no, there, there's nothing there. Whereas, you know, in your timeline here, the nice thing is, you know, like you and Jeremy had pointed out at the beginning, you're setting expectations. Hey, we're going to look over your vehicle. We're going to look for safety issues as well as what you came in for. Hey, by the way, you know, we're going to text you. Um, this is the way we like to communicate. If you prefer a different way, we could certainly, you you know, communicate that way with you. You're going to get an inspection that's going to come to your phone, you know, that you can look over all the results. Um, you know, we're going to have an overnight drop box and Hey, when you come pick up the keys, Hey, we're going to send you a review. Hopefully we did really well on the thing. And Hey, these things you didn't address, you know, we're going to remind you about these because these are some issues that potentially in the future, like you don't, you, you don't get a lot of that, right. Especially in that sales presentation, right. If you're talking and you knew that they are a mother or father and they're, you know, have a family and they're wanting to keep this family car for the next five years because, hey, I, I, I like driving my the car until the wheels are off. And, and, you know, a lot of the things that you should qualify and you should have that communication up front to qualify your customer, to understand their objections and all that. Like you, in the digital- Open-ended questions up front. They can't just be, is this your primary vehicle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask yeah. them, like, how they're you, how do you use this vehicle? And they'll give you these broad mm -hmm. answers. Oh, it's my daughter's car. And they're going to college here and there and this and that. And now you've just learned all these other things that are going to have to come into the consultation piece. You're going to talk to this individual about why it's so safe. If their daughter's driving this car to college, which is great information to have, you now can make those additional recommendations with a greater degree of confidence and connect them to a real need in their lives. It isn't just about getting to know people because they're supposed to like me. It's about getting to know them so that you can actually serve them better. It becomes a benefit. Yes, you understand. So that that would be my point. And I agree, like, we, like there's a way to present it. And we, and once again, at the beginning, I want to talk about, you know, technology. I, technology can provide everything. Amazon provides literally no type of connection but they're hundred percent just a transaction. And, you know, I think we have to be careful about that in the service industry of just becoming a transaction. Absolutely. You need that connection, right? I think we all agree. And that's what makes 100%. us hundred percent. That's what makes us now, what we are. That human component now, in here. Yeah. Go ahead, Jeremy. Now I can be the new guy, right? For a second, guys. Yeah, you can. Ex How many times can I use For a few that? more weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so let me throw this out though. Like there is something there to Amazon that I would love to recreate. So even the dev team probably going to hate for what I'm about to say. Feature but, request. So like, you know, picture us, right? Picture us all Amazon users. Amazon does an incredible job of laying out what you just said, Chris, in a progress bar. So what you just said was amazing to me. And in fact, we see it as technicians and advisors in Autotext Me. 
But imagine the day, and maybe maybe I'm missing it, guys, but that first text that hits the customer has, imagine like a, a, a line, kind of like you're getting that delivery item from Amazon and you see it progress through the, I'm guessing picture, at, right? The dots, you ordered it, it's preparing for shipping, it's on its way, it's 10 stops away, it's delivered, a picture of your box. But even before all of that, when you first ordered it, you had that page with the grade circles of all of those future things that will happen. I love so Chris, it. And it is so connectivity. Chris, yeah. So Chris, as you were talking, I'm thinking that's the first communication piece to even help the advisor because the customer is going to be driving it, right? The first text they get is going to have a screen. They prompt it, they open it, no app downloaded. I know it's App Ninja, forget the apps, right? Oh. You've, got this, <laughs> you've got this quick screen you're viewing with the circles. And the first thing it says is vehicle checked in. Your next box says pre-authorization amount. Maybe they yeah. sign away, give a number, it moves them to your inspections coming and they just see those four or five steps, you know, chosen by the shop, right? Which ones do you want, right? Even at the very end, feedback as the final dot and then one more reminder settings. So the customer sees, hey, the feedback's coming later. It's gray right now. It's about to be red. I'm about to move, you know, and the customer yep. can see themselves moving. They know through. where they're at in that process. Otherwise, yeah. it's a lot yeah. for that service advisor to try to communicate in every single instance, every single time when they're very yeah. busy. And that's exactly where things would fall apart. I think that's that's perfect. So in our last webinar, Jeremy, too, and, and just part of that. And what you're, what you're doing is you're creating images, you're creating. So when, when somebody puts an ad out on Facebook or they put it on a TV, people like people's faces. So there's a difference between you're going to stop and look at an ad that has a face longer than you are that has a generic car um, yeah. because we like faces. We like to look at people's faces because we that's what we look for for you know recognition and all the things that we do. So what you're talking about is just kind of creating this more connectivity piece with technology. And I agree. So I was gonna say some of the examples that I've heard shops doing with auto text me is sending like doing little bios with their um with their technicians and service advisors and starting to send those out as part of hey, you're checked in. Hey, check out this is Craig is going to be your service advisor. Go watch right, this quick video. Right. Um, oh, Chris, yeah, Chris, it's wonderful, that's cool. right? Right. Yeah, and then I'm even not... we talked about our service writer of the future, our remote service advisor, remote advisor and we're yeah. doing this as as already. I have a remote mm -hmm. service advisor, and we're creating these Loom videos. And Colin is he is creating the packaged sales piece, and he's in Loom. He's sitting there in the window. And he's talking about all the things that need to be done and he's giving the price, right? So it's not just the commodity of click, click, click. It's, hey, here's all the things you need. Yep. Here's how much it's going to take for us to get it done. Would you like to get this approved? If so, text us back. If you have any questions, call the shop, right? So starting to, you could still like, have that personal touch using the technology, but it's going to save time, right? And that's, once again, I go back to the beginning of this, like how can we leverage technology to save us time without losing all of that, personal connection and that oh, absolutely yeah. you know, if you were the client would you rather get a voicemail from the shop to simply call them back or would you like to getting that uh, that loom video of the service advisor explaining everything in detail walking you through all that stuff when you do have that conversation guess what when that conversation comes up now you really are just having a relational conversation a lot of the heavy lifting of the information that goes with it already handled saves time yeah so now, guys, you have me thinking, right? So on that progress bar, you just have the avatar, the, you know, the picture of the staff moving along with that dot, right? So it moves it. to the moves to the next spot. There's Craig's face on the yes. I love it. You right? should you it should goes, come work for our company and, and yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what you guys, what you, so. <laughs> so so if you have a feature the whole request, you can email to, uh, support uh, yeah, at yeah, email support. Yeah, you you got to follow <laughs> us. Same line everybody else follows, please. Yeah. Hey, it's a great idea, Jeremy. Please <laughs> email support at auto text me. I'm just Absolutely. the new guy. What am I going to say? I love. Guy. I love Go ahead, it. Craig. I can now talk about the Kano model. So Kano model is part of the Lean Six Sigma um, repertoire. So Lean Six Sigma is a manufacturing process that tries to, I guess, get your defects down to less than a percent. I think it's crazy some of the numbers I've seen, 0.001%. So what you want is as things come off the assembly line, this thing, these things are perfect. And this is something that there's a couple different books out there. Toyota is a big adopter of it. And there's all kinds of companies that have adopted in certain, even Jasper engines, they've adopted parts of lean. And, but so I have a brother who's been part of, part of the whole six Sigma process. And he came to my shop one day and he said, Hey, Chris, let's go through this Kano model. Cause I think it will really help you understand through the customer's lens of what they're seeing your shop as, because see too many times you see what the shop is 
behind the desk and as the owner and at the time the service advisor or technician whatever you're doing you don't really get to experience that and so a lot of times you assume you make assumptions based off of it. it's kind of like selling from your own wallet you assume they can't pay for it because you don't have the money yeah. so same thing you assume your customer doesn't like this thing because you don't like this thing. And texting was a great example. Mm-hmm. Seven, eight years ago, nine years ago, I started this company and I was beat. I was literally going door to door telling shops, hey, the texting is going to ca- happen. I would, ha- I had a shop throw me out. And he basically told me, don't ever come back here. And, and you know, I don't ever want to. And now everybody, you know, a lot of people have adopted it, right? Because it's, it's like, we could see trends that are coming. We can see things that are very powerful. So a lot of times at that time, what I was saying was, yeah, you, in this, my explanation was, well, my, my wife, I can text her, I love you every morning. And she texts back, I love you every morning. It saves you time. It says the message it needs to. She knows it's genuine. So why can't we do that with auto repair, right? Why can't we save time? Why can't we? And it's a little bit of a delighter and all this stuff. And, and you know, so I was already seeing that customers were already wanting to talk this way. It's just business hadn't talked this way. Mm-hmm. So that's a great example. So my brother said, okay, well, hey, let's go through this condo model and let's, let's, let's apply this to your business. So I, I encourage anybody on this panel to go look at the condo model on YouTube, all kinds of great videos that you can look at. You could do this yourself. This is a model that I created, right? And Craig's kind of had some input over over time and a lot of people have had input over, over time, but this is not like the ipso facto model for auto repair. As you can see here, the satisfaction line is the vertical line, right? The satisfaction goes up, you go low and high, and then down at the bottom, you have your excellence line, right? Your horizontal line, sorry, you have your excellence, right? And through the middle here, your performance more is better. So this kind of, we, we've taken all kinds of different aspects of the business, and you take your different kind of key interactions and key things, and you put them on this chart and you say, okay, where, where do these things lie? within this quadrant, you can see here, really where you want to be is in that, what they call the Ford Culver, that top you know, right-hand quadrant, which is high satisfaction, high excellence. Um, the interesting thing is you see the must-haves down there, right? And the must-haves kind of lay the basis and they'll never go to high satisfaction, right? You kind of, you kind of hit this line and you just kind of continue down this line and you really can't go over this line because people have expectations when they come to your auto repair shop. This is why there's an auto repair shop on every corner. This is why there's sometimes four auto repair shops in one strip center. Nobody ever pulls into an auto repair shop assuming that their car is not going to get fixed, right? They assume you're going to have a service advisor, whether that's a service advisor technician, regardless, it's going to be somebody who can communicate with them what's going on with their vehicle. They're going to have, you're going to have the proper tools to be able to fix their car. You're going to have the technician. You're going to have the parts. You're going to have supplies. All these things they assume right from the beginning are going to happen. Um, it's kind of like a bank. I mean, you go to a bank, you assume you're going to be able to make a draw, a withdrawal deposit. There's just massive, like you're, you there's not a lot of banks that delight you because you're, you have this base understanding or knowledge of what this business does. And once again, in our business, you have this now it, uh, on the bottom line of excellence, like you, you can, you can have excellent text. You can have, but uh, a customer, and I'm going to pick on you, Jeremy, like you don't know that Matt is an ASC 01 master certified certifiable badass or Jake, who's a really good tech, who's up and coming, has uh, uh, one of his certifications. Like, you don't know the difference. They're both just nice guys. They're both technicians. Like, you don't know their depth. So having an excellent tech to a customer's perspective doesn't really change their perception. Now, it changes the way you could fix the car, right? I mean, but there's an assumption, once again, that when I'm driving into the parking lot of any auto repair shop, my car is going to get fixed. They're not driving in going, yeah, I don't think they're going to fix my car. I don't think yeah. it's just assumed. And they assume you have these things. So it's very important to understand must haves. And I've heard this a competitive advantage, Craig, and we've been in classes yeah. where we ask, what is your competitive advantage? And people will say, well, we fix cars really well. That if your area is that horrible and everybody has really negative Google reviews, that could be a competitive advantage. It could be. If all the shops are absolutely just dialect of duty and, and wheels are falling off and things are not happening, it could be. But there's yeah. a high probability that when a customer goes online and go look at your, your competitors, they probably have good reviews. Right. And their shop's probably kind of clean. 
It's not and, to say that there isn't some bad shops in town. And we, we've we all gained some customers because a bad shop did correct. a bad job, but by and large. Yes. Must have important to understand. Important to lay down that framework. The middle line, like we talked about, is performance is, is, you know, more is better, right? And this is when we talk about like education, the education of our customers, um, the, the garage mahals that we talk about. <laughs> you know, you can impress, you know, it seems like they're getting bigger and bigger. Um, everything is, everything's getting bigger, bigger, bigger. But then it's funny, have y'all heard the go-to salad or simply salad or or there's a little salad place that's popping up around uh, Texas now. And you know how restaurants are getting bigger, bigger and fast foods are getting changed, they're getting bigger, bigger. This is like one little, like you could fit a snow cone stand in there. And it's like simply salad. And all they make is just a salad. Like, you know, so we go from these big things and, you know, to these small things, and these big things, and small things, this is the world we live in. But like educating your customer, the more is better, right? I mean, so if I'm I'm a customer and I have Moto Visuals, which we like that product, and you come in, Jeremy, and you're like, hey, I have my steering wheel shaken. I think I need an alignment. And we're like, okay, well, let's check it out for you. And we're like, oh, you know, actually, Jeremy, it's not your it's not your tires. Your tires are all good. You just got new ones. Your, your alignment's in. Um, actually, what's happening is your, your rotors are warped. And you're like, oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, no idea what a rotor is, but I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> Whereas I go, you read, well, you read my mind. You, let me show you. <laughs> let me show you a video real quick of what's happening with your brakes, and I show you a video of you pressing, you know, a, a 3D animated. And you're pressing the pedal, and it, the, the calipers are compressing, and your pads are trying to grab, and it's causing this vibrate. And you're like, oh my god, I, I never knew that that worked that way. That's cool. Like that's. Super cool. So the more we can educate our customers, more we can educate people, more we can train our people, their quality part. A lot of these have to do with, you know, getting into now that quadrant of, man, you could really start satisfying, you know, your customers and going above and beyond. And it's it's said, you know, it, 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 do you want to take the time? And I'll go back to time again to be able to explain some things to your customers. Or are you just are you just trying to get the sell done? You know, you, you got to think about that is service writer perspective, are you really trying to educate someone? Are you really trying to be their consultative partner, their advisor to be next to them, right? Because it does make a difference, right? It really does because, and I'll, I'll give a perfect example. I've got a buddy who's trying to buy a house and, you know, he's, he's talked to two different um, mortgage financers and he's got some kind of issues um, with his past and his credit. One of them talked to him for an hour and a half and he said, I learned nothing in an hour and a half. Talked to the other one for 45 minutes. He goes, oh my God, this person explained to me Everything I ever need to know, she's the one I want to work with. She's amazing because she took the time to work through things. Where the other guy's telling him, this is what you should do. She's like asking questions, then she's answering his questions, then she's asking him more questions, and then she's qualifying, and then she's educating him. Has She's asking these questions and explaining the why. So that does absolutely matter. Performance is an important thing. And then we get into the lighters, which you were talking about at the front. And a lot of times what we do with Autotext Me, right, we've – We've created some of these delighters on purpose. When I got into auto repair, I'm like, okay, once again, if I can text my wife, I love you in the morning, I, I could text my customer. And, and if I text my customer, first, let me, it's funny, workflow is one of our number one you know, issues. Let me manage workflow in the shop because if I can manage workflow, then I can notify people what's going on. Not only the internal people in the shop, I can notify customers externally. So it's really about the workflow. If I can manage workflow, I know where things are at. I can educate. Not only and it's a form shop. of internal communication too, which specifically addresses the need for service advisors as well. Workflow is key. Workflow is key. I, if we lose things too easily, too quickly, and without some sort of workflow managing it, we can, it, chaos becomes, un, you can't contain it back again you can't rein it back in once it becomes so chaotic you're just hoping that 5 30 shows up and god then you're dealing with the wreckage you know from yeah. until mm -hmm. you get to go home after you clear it out yeah but so but guys i i gotta say too chris right i'm thinking that through going now workflow fixes for everybody everyone's going to be in a different spot that they need something fixed like i was thinking about this earlier this morning let's say my workflow problem is is i'm using my personal cell phone to text customers so like, I get what you guys are saying. We got to have this nice internal workflow, but at the same time, just maybe even a workflow improvement of getting off of that one device that's allowed to text that someone forgot to bring back. So like, I always I like to think of it like sort of like, man, even if you just started texting just from a, you know, 
your own business line instead of a personal cell phone that's about to get lost, you immediately solve some workflow problems. So, I mean, I'm kind of adding on to what you're saying. It kind of depends on where you're at in your shop though, right? Like some people are going to go, that's a huge workflow improvement. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just, yes. Just that point right there. Sometimes, so, you know, we, there's a great term, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time, right? There, you, oh, you, yeah, you just small tweaks, yeah. eventually you change the majority, sometimes people uh, think that they need to change too much and it intimidates them and they change nothing. So I agree with you. Small changes get you to the goal much quicker. Games are one in inches, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the delighters, cups of coffee, your Keurig, your bottles of water, digital inspection, talked about that, your pickup truck, your key box at night, your your loaner car. Well, that's cool. I didn't know you had a loaner car. I know the dealership. I didn't know your, your small little auto repair shop had them. That's cool. I like loaner cars. Um, so all these things are the extra that come on top of you're fixing my car. I get a text message update. Dude, that is cool. I've ne- like, I've never got it. Te- I Amazon told me when my package was arrived, but mm-hmm. you guys have gone above and beyond. Cause you've not only told me that uh, my car's checked in, but here it's being diagnosed. And then I get this report. I can be on my phone that shows pictures and videos like this is amazing. Um, this is a great experience. This is wonderful. Um, those are the above and beyond. Those create your competitive advantages. Those are the things that people wow you. Those are why you get the Google reviews. Um, you had great service and you had all this other stuff. And the important thing is, over time, you do lose your delighters. Your delighters become must-haves. And I'll say this again. I'll say it three times. Over time, you lose your delighters. They become must-haves. One more time. Over time, you lose your delighters. They become must-haves. I'm going to say this three times because it's that important. Great example, loaner cars. As soon as I loan my car to Jeremy the first time, the next time Jeremy comes in my shop, what do you ask for, Jeremy? Probably a loaner car, I'm guessing. (laughs) Hey, do you have that loaner car available? I need a loaner car. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I gotta run uh, I gotta run up the road uh, 30 minutes especially now with gas being so expensive especially if you don't charge your customers for gas Ooh, yeah. that's, I gotta think about that we've been loading our cars <laughs> out a lot these last couple of weeks Oops, maybe I should be charging a gas surcharge we do just kidding so uh, another good example here is, is Wi-Fi 10 years ago 15 years ago coffee shops right it, it was one of those cool things that Starbucks had so everybody wanted to go to Starbucks to use the Wi-Fi and sit and sip on coffee No, everybody has. McDonald's has Wi-Fi. The city has Wi-Fi. I mean, everything has Wi-Fi. You have Wi-Fi at your shop. So the important, and I think it's really important to understand this, Craig, because you have to continue to go above and beyond and innovate and move forward. And it's some shops aren't going to like to hear this, Mm -hmm. but you, you do because whatever my shop has done and whatever I've corrupted Jeremy or Craig as my customers. And I say corrupted, I've delighted them. I've yeah. sent them text message updates. I've had the overnight. I had the DVI. I had the, you know, all I educated. That's why that other shop owner threw you out, Chris? I get thrown out all the time, right? This just depends. Um, when they leave my area to go to the next shop in the next area, what are they going to expect? Those exact same things. And they're going to look for a shop that provides that top level of service. And they're going to go through the reviews and they're going to look for, oh, check this out. The shop does status updates. Awesome. Oh, they send in inspections. Awesome. Check, check, check. Oh, they have loaner cars. Awesome. They're going to look for all these things, right? Because we don't ever like going backwards, right? We always like to go forwards. We all like more and more, right? We feel like, once again, creating that value proposition, create that value trend. Like, I'm giving you all this value. And ultimately, what we're doing is fixing your car. Um, so... Go to the next one, Craig. I think this is a good slide, your, your next slide that you created. And, and this is where, you know, once again, we got to understand like these inspections and, and, and these updates are already becoming part of this must have type. You know, we, we could talk statistics all day how many people do or don't use inspections, how many people do or don't use, you know, these text messages. And, and we have clients we know that are, you know, some are really power users and some are, you know, good users and some exactly. could use some some training mm-hmm. and we offer free training. Yes, we do. It, it, it's all the more reason to adopt this and get into this because it's not going to ever go backwards, right? Technology and all this goes forwards. You know, Barnes and Nobles, when they had the opportunity to buy Amazon, they're like, yeah, we're just going to build open more brick and mortar shops because that's not good. People want to touch books, smell books, go read the whole story this about Monza Nova's could have bought them for a, a, a P 
pennies on the dollar. And they chose to know, and then they went to go build their own and they're like, nah, it's never going to take off. Technology is, we're not going to stop texting. You know, now it's even getting worse. Now we have like, 8,000, you know, Slack and all these other different things that we, you can hit, get hit up by 800 different channels. So what's going to be the next one? And we got to continue to think and innovate, you know, whether that's getting over people on Facebook, like as a good communication, I, you know, I've had shop owners come to me and ask, Hey, should we get on um, TikTok? Yeah. If no. you're asking the question, go get on it. I, you know, what can you yeah. do with it? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't have the answer on that one because I'm old. Well, I, I, I heard uh, an article this week, actually, that said uh, the next generation uses TikTok instead of Google search. Absolutely. For simple things. One of the big, yeah, one of the biggest search engines that they're using right now. And wouldn't you want to be in those searches? And what about this for your auto repair shop? Once again, why don't you have a TikTok that says, hey, I'm your crazy service advisor. Uh, We're the best shop in town. Yeah. We're the best shop in town, right? I mean, we all hated Facebook. We didn't understand what it was. And we're like, eh, we're not going to do it. And then now we're all, you know, one of the biggest advertising platforms that we used. It was in Ratchet and Wrench is Facebook. Absolutely. And yeah, you're right, though, Chris, because once these things have been uh, taken out, you can't put it back in the box. In fact, the bo- as we've shown this this model for, for tomorrow, that box has just moved into a different part of where our customers are going to be experiencing these things. If you do a poor job performing at these things, especially, they do nothing to delight you. I see this all the time with people, especially with the proliferation of even all-in-one type shop management system. The concept of this having to be something in it in order for an all to be encompassed is already testimony to the fact that these are becoming a must-have element for the shops. But simply having the thing is not the same as having it in terms of using it in your process yes. and leveraging it with a deliberate method to to get that client satisfaction. And there are so many different things. And we've talked about this as a recent blog uh, from Chris, this mind map uh, we put there with it. There's just so many tools and things now. Which of these are simply delighters? Which of these fall into a description of how your service advisor is supposed to do the job? It's... it's uh, it's staggering. And there's, and you know, and yeah. it's, it's funny when, when I, when I created this great, like, at what point do you stop? Cause there's sub, there's sub subs on these things. They, there's a lot that could be added to this. That, that is yeah. it. I mean, this is Where's loom this, videos. They need it's to be on. complete, but it's not. <laughs> so, so guys, if I can, Craig, back it up that one screen again, yeah, yeah. this, I felt like as I'm watching this and where we just took this conversation, if it's up to me and I'm raising my hand for two blue boxes over there that to replace the old red ones, you'd have to have branded ecosystem and omni-channel. And what that will do, uh, right? Think omni-channel, if you guys haven't heard that term, you guys were just saying, well, it's going to be TikTok. It's going to be mm-hmm. WhatsApp. It's, good. it's like, you know what? You, you actually, there's no way an advisor can track 14 channels. It is, it is never going to happen. They can barely take the phone calls and manage texting. So I'm looking at this blue box going, guys, we're going to have to have a day where omni-channel is the answer, right? So if, if they message me through Google My Business, Facebook, WhatsApp, TikTok, Twitter, we're going to have to have an omni-channel helpful tool. So again, dev team, don't hate me, but we, uh-huh. like, let, let's claim that one, right? Omni-channel. And then I would say branded ecosystem if we know that the 15 channels were less likely to get to those, let's say our omni channel is not perfect. If we have an ecosystem where our customers were educated, what was more convenient, they will use that channel over the other ones. See, Amazon's already knocked it out of the park. You know, if you want to deal with Amazon, you're going through the branded Amazon ecosystem. And that's a, you know, and we're, we're like right now, we might call that a website, right? Oh, we're landing she on has a name. It's Alexa. <laughs> yeah, right. Alexa, right. But I'm thinking this through going, wait a minute. No, not really. They might hit your Google page first. They might find your Facebook page first. How can we educate the customer to go to whatever we are going to claim is our ecosystem so that we know we can help all those channels hit our omni channel? Anyways, if I'm putting two blue boxes, I, probably what I would put up there, right? Where we kind of have exactly to go. Because back to your screen, Craig, I'm looking at that getting instantly overwhelmed. Wait, we already said the service advisor doesn't have time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Right. What else can we throw at them that they must? Let's add to that job description, right? You have to go into these 14 channels and respond. I yeah, guarantee there's somebody that's putting that weight on a guy and needs to replace him soon. <laughs> <laughs> and I think what's happened, you know, one of the reasons why this blog is created too, Craig, is right just to point out that there are a lot of things and touch points in software that we use in the day. It's unco- how many? How many do you use? Craig in one day, how many? 
Oh man, I have I have three screens right now, and I have at least six applications running at this given moment. Jeremy, I'm assuming the same. More oh, or absolutely. Less. Yep. Slack, Trello, right? Email, Gmail, right? You got Everything. your Adobe over here. Zoom, you got your yep. this. You got your Canva. You've got your. Yep. You know. So it, you know it, there is a lot. There there is a lot where you know software companies they they do their best to to create the and and actually mm-hmm. maintain some these points but to, you know for you know kind of one software to, to, to do everything and, it's not gonna and happen. to craig's point of all in one yeah i mean that's it's it's nice it's it's a great it's a great idea i love the, the omni idea. channel is where it's at you get them communicating into one spot yes. well i think that's... i think the, 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 to jeremy's point right here you go i mean so integration. if you mm-hmm. if you look here i, I on this I, void is the communication i have text in an email, I don't have Facebook, I don't have Twitter, I don't have WhatsApp, I don't have no social media, TikTok, yeah. I don't have tw- like I don't. Yeah, there's none of the social media, and there are shops out there that are communicating with their customers, right? There yeah, are some and, that are using IVR. They're using you know voice and an automated voice that's not even on there, right? You can't even get a hold of people. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So and and that that's where to be real. I think everybody's going to have to just accept that. Y- yeah, you can you can get tech metric. But tech metrics never going to own that communication point with Google. They're never going to own that channel with Facebook. Whatever that next, they're never going to own that channel with TikTok. So I think that's kind of right, Chris. That's what Craig, I was mentioning the omni-channel idea. It's more about the integration with those things that you'll never own. It doesn't matter if you claim you're an all-in-one or whatever we claim we are. We cannot own those. Like those brands are bigger than any of us. Right. And it's more about how can we make sure the convenient aspect doesn't go away? The customers we know are using them. How can we make that part of the advisor's workflow yes. without overtasking them? So, yeah, 100 percent. And it yeah. all comes down to that bottom line, too. We, we can have things feel better and everything else and shop happier customers, and everything else. But if it doesn't impact that bottom line, it's it's. No, it's no one's even going to bother with it. Business is there to do a one thing in, in particular. And even in that description of a service advisor that I shared with this uh, group uh, in that document, we recognize that it, it's simply not uh, possible to just simply focus on safety, reliability, and efficiency of a client's vehicle. That that we you could run yourself out of business with a laser focus on that goal you have to recognize that if you're not benefiting the bottom line of the business nobody in the business is going to be in a position to succeed in that mission of making sure the vehicle is reliable safe and efficient and when you function with a process it is amazing what it does i've taken these numbers from an independent shop um a client i won't disclose who in a one month a period of leveraging further the entirety of the process. We found that inspections weren't being leveraged in the sales portion. We track that, not a text me. And in the month of May, you see uh, that the uh, the numbers weren't weren't great for viewed inspections total. The averages on all those total gross sales um, in May also not as great. When they made a concerted effort to just make sure the inspections are being leveraged and educating client following through on the process all the way through in a one month dedicated effort just to make incremental improvements, $60,000 gross difference, just adhering to a process, getting everybody in the establishment going further to it. And the best part of the reason I want to share this example uh, is because this is a rarity whenever you're doing a month to month analysis of a shop car count was nearly identical, nearly identical. And in a similar time of the season as well, this is a direct correlation to following through uh, with there. And uh, I get questions all the time. Can we print slides and and, uh, can we share those slides? Uh, We will definitely get a recording out. If you do want some slide type content, please reach out to me and email me. I'll put my email again in chat and uh, make a specific request to me there, Craig at autotext.me or I'll do the Craig at autotextme.com. And that is in chat for you there. So if you do want to see those sort of things, uh, please uh, email us there. Now, uh, we do need to wrap up today. There's plenty more to discuss. We always like talking final quality control, some of the issues. I'm not going to try to get through all of our slides today, uh, but I do want to give Chris and and Jeremy just a minute to wrap up and, and give any closing remarks. Good, Jeremy. Yeah, well, um, thanks, Craig, for uh, th- this help catch me up. So I'm hoping now to kind of take some of the um, just absorb this, hopefully get back with the advisory council, kind of be some of my next step, Craig, I want to kind of run with some of these ideas. It, my, my brain's already on overload. So I love hopefully it. I was a, hopefully I was a sponge enough to ca- capture what, what we're all interested in. So 
Beautiful. No, it is wonderful having your voice. I, I love the new perspective you bring to it. And I'm glad that our clients get to be introduced to you. Thanks. Chris? Craig, I appreciate you putting this on as well. This is good, right? This topic, it, 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 yeah. it's never going to get old. And, it, and we could talk for days on, I, I think you framed it up very well. Um, service advisor is one of those topics that a lot of times gets gets glazed over. It, it we, 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 we spend a lot of time on our technicians and we do spend some time on sales, but I, I like kind of how you went into some of the deeper roles of not just selling. A, a service advisor, we expect a lot from them, including that workflow management, some of the other pieces that I think a lot of people don't really understand or, or definitely need some help on. So oh, I think excellent job putting we- some of this together. No, thanks, Chris. And I think that's the final point for everyone here. We want to just see how it all plays into the picture of those three categories, the customer experience, the internal workflow, and of course, that bottom line. And if you can communicate the description of the job for a service advisor with those things, we're going to be in a much better place to actually see them through. Thanks for joining us, everyone. You have our email. You know how to reach us. Please, if this uh, recording or you're watching this later is helpful to you, like, subscribe. We keep these posted on our YouTube channel for your consumption later on, and we do want to hear from you. Our team is here to train. You can reach out to support at autotextme.com, and we will connect you with any resources that you need for assistance. Or if you're new to autotextme, sales at autotextme.com as well. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you.